Hey everyone, uh, thanks for being here. It's the last talk of the day, so normally it's, it's not the, the most uh, popular one, so it's great to be uh, a lot of people here. Um, I want to, to start introducing this talk. What I have the, sorry, is this one? Okay, so meanwhile, um, I want to make a quick introduction on, on why, why we are doing the, this talk. Um, actually, I think the first word is the most important. It's the why. There is a book, Start, uh, start With the Why, which I think is very important um, in order to define how you do the, the things. Um, this presentation is a little bit more philosophical, out of the box trying to see and figure out the status of the actual market, the blockchain, the crypto space in general, um, where is XRP right now, where it can go, and then, thanks to that, we will figure out why uh, we choose this option, and with this why, we'll see then later how, and when, and all these other questions. But first of all, why XRP needs to be VN compatible, taking, uh, let's say, the, the biggest thing. So the contents, it's... 10 minute talk, so it will be quite short. Uh, but the content will be, first of all, defining what is EVM compatibility. I'm sure most of you guys here already know it, but we will define it very simplistically. We will see the benefits of being EVM compatible, and then we will put uh, some overview in numbers. We will put some numbers on the reality on where is the ecosystem right now and what's this potential uh, for XRPL, this unparalleled potential I think we have right now to get to, to a, a larger, far larger scene, and the opportunities that this will generate uh, for all types of XRPL community, even if you are a, a node, even if you are a user, a developer, or if you are a big protocol outside XRPL that you may be interested in launch uh, your dApp here. So what is EVM compatibility? Very simple, in a couple of phrases. We have that Ethereum is a blockchain that its purpose is uh, provide a framework to build the apps. We want to build the apps, fantastic. What are the apps? The apps are decentralized applications built on the blockchain using smart contracts. Normally, the app is a normal web to app, but that operates peer-to-peer -peer in order to remove intermediaries. New world, the smart contracts. Uh, smart contracts then are pro computer programs that execute a set of predefinite rules by the developer who programs them uh, on top of the EBM without needing an intermediary. The EBM then, uh, it's the Ethereum, stands for Ethereum Virtual Machine. It's a computation engine, it's a computer that is in charge of executing this smart contract, these pieces of code. Uh, and computing the state of uh, the ledger uh, after every, uh, on every new block. It compiles any different kind of very important Turing complete smart contracts into bytecodes. This bytecode is actually the standard uh, where all the Ethereum nodes can, can understand these, these bytecodes. Turing complete, uh, by the way, means that it can solve any computational problem. In this case, the EVM, um, the Ethereum virtual machine, it's flexible and can run any code written in Solidity, Python, Java, and C++. So then, uh, by extension, EVM compatibility, it's nothing more than the availability uh, of your chain to run these smart contracts compatible with this Ethereum virtual machine and recognize or to run code which can be recognized by this Ethereum virtual machine. At the end, it's in a standard. It could, it's nothing uh, super valuable. It could be a completely different standard, but it's the standard that the industry has taken. So uh, having a standard has a lot of benefits. It's very important. And this is some of the benefits of having a standard, not specifically EVM, but uh, for being in a standard. The best advantage, or one of the best advantages, is the portability. Since uh, we have a standard virtual machine, then any smart contract can launch or migrate into any EVM chain. It means that just for adding EVM compatibility to the XRP ledger, all the dApps in the blockchain ecosystem, it's more than 40,000, uh, can, with very minimal effort or no effort, launch in one afternoon XRPL. That's in parallel. 
Also, we can, they can do it with very lower cost because they don't need to reuse the code. And also, even if you want to build new code, since there is a lot of libraries, the biggest standardized set of tools and libraries out there, you normally import almost all the parts and you just make the new pieces of, of code. The rest is already done. So that um, lowers the cost a lot. You can connect them to any other EVM chain because since they are all interoperable, when the first people who made a bridge contract uh, to connect on EBM, then it can be set on the, all the other EBMs. There is more than 700 EBMs right now. They're all connected in a decentralized way. And the most important part, it's like most of the user base and developers is where they are, on the standard, not in a specific chain, so in the standard. So the apps uh, built on EBM compatible chains can access a user base of more than 100 million unique wallets which uh, makes uh, your dApp uh, far more easy to get to the mass adoption rather than if you launch an ecosystem where you cannot target all, all these people, right? So obviously these are benefits very interesting, but um, to make sure that these are not just assumptions, let's put it some, in some numbers on it to, to really see how much we can explode uh, with, with this interoperability. So is it worth it? Let, let's figure out that. So in terms of developers, uh, compatibility is very important. Um, XRPL has something around 100, 200 developers, which is very good, uh, and it's more than a lot of ecosystems. But if you put all the rest of ecosystems together, then there is far more developers. The good point is that what a developer is doing on Avalanche, someone can take it and use it on Ethereum. What the developer is doing in Binance Smart Chain, someone can take it and use it on Polygon. Actually, a lot of times, these protocols launch in many chains. So um, obviously, all this software built on top of that can change a lot. And uh, you know, EBM only on 2022 had more than 60K new developers. It means that being EBM compatible, we can start now using the code generated during years for thousands and thousands and thousands of developers. That's an unparalleled potential growth just in building things. And we can reuse, even if they come specifically to launch on DBM sidechain, our 100 or 200 developers can deploy all these contracts here very easily because the work is already done. In terms of the apps uh, as well, um, the people on the XRPL is producing a lot. Uh, with the developers we have, uh, we are um, creating a lot of the apps, a lot of protocols. Uh, actually, if you see the productivity, probably it's, it's better if you divide it per people. But, you know, just on Polygon right now, we have more than 37k D apps. All these D apps can be migrated by them or by our developers very easily in a very uh, few effort, with very few effort into uh, XRPL ecosystem. With, the, with this compatibility. And also, if we want to be compatible with the top protocols, we need to be EVM compatible. I found that 25 out of 25 uh, higher total value lock protocol are built on EVM compatible networks. And that makes a lot of sense. Because if you launch a protocol, if you launch it on an EVM compatible network, you can take almost 80, 90% of the, you are addressing 90% of the general public. While if you launch in a different technology, even if you concur and you are the best in this ecosystem, you are taking a very small portion of the total market. And this is not competing internally, so it's competing really with the, with the broad market. In terms of libraries, you may change. Okay, this is maybe changing, this, uh, all the people is coming here, etc. XRPL has a lot of downloads. It has more than 18,000 uh, downloads per week, the library. So it's a lot of development activity, and it's a very used library. But uh, looks like the differences are probably going to even increase more. There's millions of uh, downloads um, oh, on the... It's the end of time, or...? Okay. There's millions of uh, downloads on the other libraries. And also for launching uh, uh, your dApps as well, I think it's very important to figure out that, uh, you know, for example, Chum Wallet, it's the best wallet in the ecosystem, or at least in my opinion, it's very good, and it has in their website around 130K uh, monthly active users, which is a lot. Um, if you are making a dApp uh, connecting with the button connect with Chum, you are tar your maximum goal is to get 130K uh, users, right, which is a lot, but it's difficult to make a very profitable or sustainable D app if it's not very massive or if not all these people are 
spending a significant amount of money on commissions and specifically with the scales of that. MetaMask is the most used EBM um, wallet and has more than 30 million monthly active users. So basically, even if you get 1% of the MetaMask users to go there, your DApp can sell to a far more people. So being EBM compatible, it's very important for this type of things to open, not really on the XRP ecosystem, but to the entire uh, community. I think that's, that's very important, right? So what are the opportunities here for the XRP ledger? I think the opportunities are, are bigger than never. Let me see if... Yeah. So why is XRP ledger uh, so high in the top? So I think that the most important thing, as David Schwartz said, it's like um, that it's not important that you have all the features, you have all the, the things, so that you are very good on doing what you are doing. XRPL has been running for more than 10 years very securely. It's the top four chain. We have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have Binance, and we have uh, XRPL. Uh, Tether is a token uh, sitting on, on many chains. So that, that's an, an incredible achievement. This means that the safety and the security of the network, the throughput is very good. This means the liquidity, the listing, the confidence of the network is very good. And this is what XRP is very good about. The XRP token itself, it's, it's something very interesting. So now, if we want to bring this liquidity and bring these uh, new operations, we shouldn't forget XRP. It's not launching something new. It's relying on what we built so far in order to extend its functionality. So XRP has a network of nodes, validators, and people that has maintained uh, this very uh, good XRP token and very good ecosystem. We can easily launch an EBM sidechain through a bridge where XRP is still with the same value, with the same one-on-one -on -one back uh, capacities, but it has EBM compatibility to connect the rest of the chain. So XRP sits as the base layer, the security layer, the safety layer, the liquidity layer, and then we put EBM compatibility as an extension to connect to the, to the rest of the ecosystem. Why people will do that and why these opportunities are so incredible? So look, I think for the apps, when I put the apps, I mean the top protocols, they will be more than happy uh, to launch on XRPL uh, since the start. They are launching in top 20, top 50 protocols uh, because they are EBM compatible. Normally they have this selector so you can connect to four or five ecosystem. It's not competing. In EBM you launch in different ecosystems. So who will not want to launch on XRP? Everyone is launching on Ethereum, everyone is launching on Binance Smart Chain, and then they go back to other chains. They will surely will like to, to add to XRP because you then have a new market cap opportunity of this 27 billion uh, market cap that XRP have. They don't do it, not because they don't like XRP, they don't do it because they don't have, it's not worth it to code it only on XRP, while if you are EBM, you can launch in many ecosystems, so you can get to everywhere. But if you become EBM compatible, then you are in the top three list of priorities to launch from a theoretical or capitalist point of view, at least. And why will choose that? Because XRP is still the native token, so all this 27 billion, all this liquidity, all this security, all we talked before, it's already available. For developers, I also encourage a lot of people to launch things before the bigger the apps comes there. Uh, when on the launch of Avalanche, for example, someone just copied Uniswap, they call it Trader Joe, and they have 83 million market cap. Someone copied Aave, they call it uh, Banky Finance, they have 20 million market cap, and Avalanche is 10 times smaller than XRP. So it means these numbers could be multiplied per 10, just for, you not, didn't need to be creative. You can just copy an application that works, operate, obviously as a company it's not that easy as just deploying the smart contract, but effectively you can make your, your space. So I do recommend uh, all developers to start working on, on that before going to mainnet. So they are the first ones to launching when, when it's the time and they can take this advantage. Right now you will be able to offer your XRP D apps to 100 million users and you are targeting more than 100 billion market cap. Right now you are targeting 27. But if you take the top 10 um, cryptocurrencies in coin market cap, they are all EBM compatible or they have all EBM compatibility except XRP and 
Bitcoin because they can uh, include that. But the rest, Cardano included uh, last year, Solana, like everyone is, is doing that because it's the, it's the meta, it's the, it's the goal right now. And for users, I think, will be very interesting as well as the developers are going to bring all this um, technology to engage with a lot of the apps, to engage with a lot of EVM chains that right now it was impossible to do. So for finishing, and the last sentence uh, I want to make is that I think we should take XRPL very seriously. Um, XRP, uh, it's a top three, top four protocol, and our goal should be competing on the bigger sense, competing with Ethereum, competing with Binance Smart Chain, competing with Polygon, competing with the big actors, and sharing these developers, sharing these uh, softwares, protocols, etc. We are not doing now because we don't have this uh, tech uh, extension available, but once we are doing that, then liquidity, safety, running time, all these things will matter a lot because we will be on the ecosystem. So I think if um, we take seriously XRP, I think that's the natural thing to onboard, to open it to the potential of getting all these developers, all these uh, technologies and all these apps deployed effectively to the, to the biggest end. So thanks for your attention and yeah, it's a good job. Um. Awesome. So thank you very much. Uh, this is the last presentation, but since it's the last one, like, do you want to take questions? Yeah, yeah, sure. So does anyone have any questions on the EVM? Uh, yeah. Hi. So I was thinking about this number, 700 EVM compatible cha mm -hmm. chains. So how can we cut through this number? What would be your advice to developers when it comes to, no, to XRPO in terms of communicating and you know engaging and making sure developers can you know be interested in really coming to XRP or not to some other 699 yeah. available out there mm -hmm. yeah that's a very good question so um, yeah normally I think we have a very good advantage here uh, which is the liquidity which is the position of XRP have so normally the protocols as they grow they don't launch in one ecosystem they normally launch in one or two ecosystems and they take, try to take like the minimum places to get the maximum uh, potential benefit. I think the privileged position that XRP uh, is right now is somehow guaranteeing that if you effectively want to launch the app, you'll probably do it in Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, and XRP. Makes uh, sounds reasonable. So it doesn't matter only if they launch here, which probably a lot of people uh, will be able to do. But also, it matters that you can use anything that is in the ecosystem. So as I was sharing, if there is an innovation or research happening on uh, you know, automatic market makers, if there is an automation happening or something related with ZK, with roll-ups, with whatever topic, you can, if no one is building it here, then it's, you know, it's a sweetie to get it here and bring it to XRPL and have the exclusivity to do that. So people will be able to use that. When these innovations are happening right now, if it happens that the innovation is not specifically in the ecosystem, the response time is low. We've seen that, for example, with the NFTs. Uh, OpenSea was like NFTs were everything, 2021. NFT, uh, OpenSea has a Polygon, has Solana, has many chains listed. By the time we could build the main men, audit, launch on the chain, etc., the market was completely change it. Um, so I think the idea is like, or you support innovation happening in your chain, or you have compatibility with the ecosystems where it's more likely that this innovation happens, and you will be sure that someone will replicate it here because it's very worth it. <laughs>